Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, really exciting to be here with you today to introduce the digital power plant. Dick spoke about expanding operating space within, space within the constraints of an existing plant. My focus is building more on the capability that we use to build more flexibility into the plant up front. So, but before I do that, today I want to talk a little bit about why this is important now and share with you what I believe is the problem we're trying to solve. There's a growing global demand. You've heard about this today a couple of times already. Um, there are 1.3 billion people on the planet today that don't have access to adequate power. In the next decade, there's going to be another billion people uh, added to the population. That's going to drive 50% growth in energy demand worldwide. And it's going to have to be served by about 3,000 gigawatts of additional capacity. Electricity is one of our most important human achievements. It supports economic growth, safety, and health. It's fundamental to everyday life. What the world wants is affordable, accessible, reliable, and sustainable energy. While we know the market dynamics today, we can't predict the future. Considering political decisions, regulatory incentives, consumer preferences, and technology developments, those are all critical in making smart choices of how we take actions in the future. As a result, we need to be more agile and adaptable so we can meet these changing demands of what our customers are going to do today as well as in the future. To solve that problem, we need a digital uh, transformation or digital infrastructure that enables us to take advantage of all the inherent capabilities that exist in the power generating assets. It's a marriage of the physical and digital that we've talked so much about today. To reach entitlement in this digital transformation requires two basic things. First, a scalable digital technology suite, and second, a deep, deep physical understanding of the machines on which they're applied. Today, I'm here to introduce the concept of a software-defined machine. It's smart, customizable, adaptable, and connected. Dick introduced the spider chart concept in his presentation. He talked about expanding the operating space within an existing power plant. His graphics also illustrated a physical boundary which limits how far you can push an operating window. I'm focused not only on enhancing the, the operating window, but also understanding where those physical boundaries are which constrain it. Both are vitally important to creating operating flexibility, and now we have the tools to deliver. What you're looking at now is our test facility in Greenville, South Carolina. The HA gas turbine platform launched two years ago. It's the largest, most efficient gas turbine, heavy duty gas turbine platform in the world. It's the heart of our new build digital power plant. It's been through a design validation that's unlike anything ever seen in the industry. We've invested over $250 million in the last five years to solely accomplish two primary goals. The first was to meet the need to get bigger, more efficient, and cleaner power generation technology into the market faster than we've ever done it before. I believe you heard Jeff make this point today on the main stage. The second is to truly understand the physical limits of the new machine, to make sure we're taking advantage of all the inherent capability that exists in these machines. We can accomplish this with this facility because it's not connected to a grid. We can run at any load and any speed we want. It allows us to push these engines to their design limits and beyond, to really understand where the boundaries are. In the last test alone, we collected over five terabytes of data. So what does that data tell us? It helps us redefine those boundaries that I talked about in the spider chart. As an example, what you're looking at uh, right now is an infrared video capture of what's known as a compressor surge. This is an extremely stressful mechanical event that no operating asset should ever experience in the field. And we design controls to protect the operating limit so that it never happens. In the past, the operating limit was defined analytically and margined heavily so that we stayed well below uh, the, uh, the potential for a surge event. With the data we gathered from these tests, however, we know exactly where that limit is. And we can design those controls to take advantage of all that inherent capability in that compressor while still protecting it. This is a great example of truly understanding a physical boundary. 
And, that under, and understand, those kinds of understanding across the entire machine gives us insights we need to develop software configurations to solve customer problems and give them many options on how they want to run that plant in the future. <clears throat> Just like Dick spoke about expanding the operating space with the design limits of the installed fleets, we're focused on designing machines with more capability and truly understanding those limits better than ever before. Dick also introduced a suite of applications that will become a standard part of our HA digital power plant. Now I'd like to introduce three new software applications for the HA that are designed to help customers uh, manage these changing needs. I think you've heard about some of these already today. <clears throat> First, I'll talk about the virtual battery. This is a solution for fast response frequency regulation. Because of the unique mixes of generating assets and loads, some grids have the need for a certain number of stored megawatts, I'll call it, that are almost instantaneously available to manage small power fluctuations and maintain a stable grid frequency. We've used test data and modeled the HA to see how we could serve this need. It performs exactly like a battery. It tracks small output fluctuations at the speed required to provide that service, <clears throat> which could create uh, additional re revenue opportunities as opportunities arise as these grid uh, uh, issues become more, more prevalent. The second application I'll talk about is called ancillary response. This is a more broadly focused application around grid stability. As generation assets become more diverse and distributed, and the loads they serve become more and more sensitive to voltage and frequency fluctuations, we need solutions to respond to grid code requirements around the world that are becoming more and more stringent. In the past, compliance to a grid code was clearly a requirement and almost always a theoretical exercise. We simulated our machine controls. We would instruct the machine to respond in accordance to the code. Running an actual test just wasn't practical while you're connected to a grid. Back in our test facility in Greenville, however, we recently de demonstrated a full regimen of grid code compliance tests to our first HA customer and the UK Grid Authority with great success. As most of you know, the UK Grid um, codes are some of the most stringent in the world. And, and not only did we validate that the, the compliance to those grid codes, we also uncovered additional capabilities in the machine that increased the rate of response to large grid events. So as grid codes become more and more stringent as time goes on, we've got capability in the machine with software to be able to adapt quickly. The third application is Smart Start. This relates to flexible and optimized starting capability. In the past, the plant was designed and built to accommodate a specific mission profile. Their ability to respond to changing markets were limited to the capabilities built into that original design. Dick's team works to expand those spaces, as I've said. But on the new plants, we're working to build that flexibility in up front. Just like aggressively driving a car, uh, if you want to trade fuel burn and your car life uh, for a thrill, or in the case of a power plant, uh, a lucrative revenue opportunity, now we can do that. You'll see a demo of this next along with the virtual battery, and I we would love to see all of you in the tech hall to get a deeper dive on, on, on some of these demos. Each of these apps are available today for the HA Digital Power Plant, but they are the, just the first of many to come. We're very, very excited about our ability to marry the physical and digital worlds. And this is, this is only the beginning, as I've said. Um, but as I started, I said, to reach entitlement in this digital transformation requires two basic things, scalable digital technologies and a deep physical understanding of the machines on which we apply them. A software company can't do this. A hardware company can't do this. Only a digital industrial company can do this. And GE is that company. So on a personal note, I've been in this industry for over 30 years. I've been involved in many technology advancements that create value for customers, almost all of them associated with hardware. I couldn't be more excited about where we are today with this digital transformation because of all the opportunity that brings to our customers and to GE. 
We appreciate your attention today. We look forward to working together as things evolve over time and we, and we change the world.